There's a saying, if you allow your passion to become your purpose, it will one day become your profession. Our job is to give people the opportunity at the fish of a lifetime. But on our days off, it's our turn. So this morning, we're down here in your neck of the woods, Jay, in um, Gasparilla Sound, Placida area. And there's definitely a presence of red tide up and down the west yeah. coast of Florida right now. But there's still fish to catch. Yeah, And I think sure. that's something that gets lost in the shuffle sometimes. You were out yesterday doing some scouting and found beautiful water and found fish, redfish and, and tarpon and snook. And, you know, I think that uh, it's important to mention that there's still some fish to go catch. Yeah, for sure. And you know, sadly enough, we have to deal with this red tide more and more often. So clearly there's additional issues that need to be addressed. But a lot of times those game fish, uh, when they can, they will be pushed away. You know, the red, they'll, they know the water quality is getting bad and sometimes they'll move into a new area. And in a lot of cases, it kind of concentrates them. Sure. Uh, so I found some beautiful water yesterday with some hungry fish, so. We'll see what happens. I'm ready. Let's do it. So we're uh, fishing Gasparilla Sound. It's a really neat fishery that Jay guides on full time and has been doing so for 15, 20 years now. It's really my home waters. You know, it's really where I spend majority of my time. Uh, majority of my inshore guide trips are spent right there in the backcountry, where I love to find some of those fish that are cruising across the grass. It's a great place to be. So when you're fishing an area that's as tidal uh, based as, as this one is, they're not huge tides. It's not like they're six foot swings like you get up in North Florida. They're two foot tides this time of year, but it makes a big difference to these fish because that's what they're used to. So we started early because we had a really good outgoing tide, which I actually prefer to fish an outgoing tide. But you know, we also had a good incoming tide a little bit later in the day. Every bit of tide water moving is, is critical. I don't care if it's only a foot and a half. That foot and a half here is as important as the five and a half, six foot in Jacksonville. So as long as we have water moving, we're in good shape. Right, it's just whatever the fish are accustomed to. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Things started to slow him down there towards the end of the tide. I told him, I said, hey, we need to go to a different spot so we can follow in, you know, basically have that incoming tide coming at us. And I think we're gonna find some fish. And uh, I think it was the right move. Anytime we get the opportunity to, you know, run that skiff and, and kind of be all quiet, that we didn't see a soul back there. Um, that's a beautiful part of what, you know, why I call it home and Charlotte Harbor is so vast with all these little barrier islands uh, and all throughout Charlotte Harbor, there's a lot of ground to fish and um, I find that even sometimes where the bite may not be going on, there's plenty of other areas to fish. This jig's too heavy, Jay. They're still coming at you. Coming at us? Yeah. They're going a little left. See them going left of it, you know? Yeah. Almost in front of the boat, a little left. Yeah. Yes. Got him, baby. Got him, baby. Holy smokes. Still right there, Jay. Yeah. I'm going to jump down. You're not going to believe this. I have a snook on. What? I have a snook on. Redfish schools are not something new to us. When they're that tightly packed together, it is a little bit odd, 
on top of each other, slithering over each other. And, and you know, for that reason, I think that's why that snook got the jump on my bait because those fish were all just so engulfed in what they were doing and had their heads buried in the ground and their tails up. How did this happen? How does this physically happen? 200 redfish. I know, I know. And I hooked the snook. And he ate it too, buddy. <laughs> wow, <laughs> can you believe that? I mean, it's a pretty good snook. I got you, Rob, Is there such a thing as bad luck I when mean, you catch a snook out of 200 redfish? I mean, really, the that thing is... right there, by the way. Oh, yeah, I think, I think they're coming back. They are. Yeah. And this isn't a bad fish. I think those redfish had just their face buried in the grass. Right. And he was looking up at life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a little odd. Now, it does happen. All those fish tend to work together and that snook's just kind of suspending there, just waiting for those redfish to pop something up out of that grass that they've been mowing on, and he's gonna take advantage of that. So when we moved for that incoming tide, you know, we were fishing in an area that had predominantly turtle grass. Now we certainly took advantage of these little weedless uh, paddle tail. That paddle tail will put out a little bit of a vibration that those fish will instantly pick up on. Um, you know, that was able to get through that, some of that turtle grass. You know, that was a beautiful setup uh, and just what we were able to fish. Sticking it, okay? Yeah, go ahead. See him? See him? Yeah, to the right of me. Oh, nope, maybe not quite to the right. Get him, Jay. That a boy. Got that bad boy. Oh, it's a stud, too. Is it? Which way is he going? Can I get to greedy? To the right? He's going to the right? You can catch these can fish I, right here. Can I get greedy? Yeah. You know, we're in the summertime pattern, late summer, where we typically will have those groups of redfish show up. You know, and they're most generally gonna be the upper slot or even over slot, kind of the bull reds, if you will. And as they were coming in, I think a lot of times, you know, they're coming in to certainly feed on that incoming tide, but, you know, we, our area has been kind of plagued with some red tide. Uh, and in spotty areas where they feel that pressure of that tide, they'll come in and get away from it. Um, if they have that opportunity to get away, they certainly will. And, and this was a great example of having those big groups of redfish just completely balled up. <laughs> you need help, buddy? Um, you know, I'd like for you to hook another one right there, like real quick, like. You oh, that's over. That's a good fish, bud. You need me? I got him, I got him. I don't think that it's any secret that there's been a little bit of a steady decline. Uh, in the west coast of Florida, meaning, you know, maybe Manatee down to the Naples area has seen a struggle of, of in recent years. We're, we're more adapt to release them for tomorrow as opposed to keep them for the dinner plate. This way, future generations, uh, you know, our younger clients, our kids, our nieces, our nephews, those, those people can go out and enjoy this fish too. We've got to take care of this resource. Let me tell you, there is nothing that can prepare you for seeing a huge group of redfish with their tails and their backs out of the water. And that right there will just about make you stop in your tracks and really think about what you're doing. Some people kind of relate it to buck fever. You know, I don't get much opportunity to do some hunting, but if there's everything, anything even close to that, it's gonna be that redfish tail sticking out of the water. And just what it does to you internally and get your mind right to make that right cast so we can hook up on some fish. Seeing that group all by itself and thinking we might have an opportunity to double up, and sure enough, we had that shot. Got him. Got him? Got him. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is kind of like fishing right here. Uh-oh. Oh my goodness. 
Man, I, mine is I rolling. Missed, I missed the first two bites I got. <laughs> I saw them heavy, heavy waking to you. Yeah, there were two of them fighting over it, and they were knocking each other out of the way. Man, they they got to be chewing all over these little glass minnows we saw coming through. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, but I might have Jackson. <laughs> oh. I mean, maybe. I mean, you catch a snook out of him, why not I catch a jack? Oh yeah, I got Jackson. I've got a red on. <laughs> okay, this is tricky. <laughs> Coming down. Yeah, look at that school right there, man. How cool is that? Man, catch those all day. Let me go ahead and handle him for. Ooh, that's a oh, good one. Oh my gosh, that's a stud, God, buddy. Look how, look how orange he is. Oh, oh, I still don't have him. I got him. I got him. I got him. Come on. Ah. Daily? Yeah. That is a stud. Yeah, this water's a little hotter, so you know, they're not making the long, long runs. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, hook's really good right in the corner. Buried in them. I'll tell you, I think that um, the way these, look how gold he is. The way these fish are chewing, they gotta be all over those mullet we saw come through and all those little glass minnows we saw come through. That's the top of the slot. Oh yeah. Legal fish right there. The stud feel. That's a great fish. Well, you know, Jeremy, I, I really think that this is a product of that red tide pushing in yeah. the, off the coast. Yeah. And absolutely. these fish, you know, they don't want to stay in that dirty water, that nasty stuff. So I think they got kind of pushed back here. And with the bait getting pushed back here too, yeah. they're in here just chewing it up. You saw, I mean, they're doing handstands trying to get some of that bait. Yeah, they're going nuts. I mean, there's, this is perfect habitat for them. There's flow right there, over there, you know, there's yeah. different flows. We're on the incoming tide Different too. areas, yeah. And that's why they're all fired up. You know, we were here on the slack and we didn't see this. Right. And then all of a sudden the tide changes and, you know, after we ate lunch and let it change, now all of a sudden, game on. They're fired up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, by the way, I'm glad I could go ahead and get that jack out of the way. So you can go ahead and catch him. Yeah, yeah. But, you know. It takes skill to catch a yeah. redfish. Well, I'm a team player though. Yeah. I'm a team player. For living and guiding out of that water all the time. You know, I see lots of different scenarios and, you know, if there's one thing that I look forward to, it's just having that time to really kind of dial in a situation and spend the time on the boat with Jeremy it was great to see. And uh, yeah, we got to pull on some fish, so can't argue with that. It turned out to be one of those epic days that you just won't soon forget. To catch those fish and to release those fish back into that school, it doesn't really get much better than that.